Hello folks, welcome back to the Jordan 411 Sports Show. I'm really excited and honored to have the very special guest on my show. He, he is a former professional football player. He played three, three years in the NFL and 14 years with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He also holds the record for most touchdowns in the CFL. And he was inducted into the Winnipeg, or the CFL Hall of Fame in 2012. Please give a huge hand to the Bears! So my first question is, mm -hmm. how was your childhood growing up? Uh, well, my childhood, I had a pretty good childhood. Uh, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I had two older brothers and two older sisters. So uh, I was the last of five kids. Actually, I was a mistake. My parents didn't mean to have me, so I was the best mistake ever. Growing up, uh, I mean, I played every sport possible, not just football, I played basketball, ran track. I did volleyball, I did gymnastics, I did soccer, so I had a pretty awesome childhood. What was um, your reaction when the old stadium was torn down? It was tough, it was tough. Uh, I cried a little bit, I shed a couple of tears, but uh, I mean, it, it was time, that stadium was bad. Yeah. It was pretty bad, really so bad. it was time, you know, but that stadium where it gave me an opportunity uh, to do a lot of things, you know, my 14 years with the Bombers was, was spent in that stadium. Uh, some good memories, some bad memories, but overall, you know, it, it was some, some positive things that happened in that stadium. How did it feel uh, when you were in, like on the field for the last time and people chanting your name in 2008? Uh, it, it, was, it was overwhelming because you realize that this is the end of my football career. Uh, I started playing football when I was four years old. So... And then, you know, at the time I was 38 and it, it, it went by like that because I had so much fun. So you just have to realize that, uh, you know, I didn't cry that it was over. I, I, I rejoiced because I actually had an opportunity to play football until I was 38 years old. Very few people get to do that, basically can say I've been doing something I've, since I was four years old. What's the best coaching advice you ever got? Actually, the best coaching advice I ever received was from my uh, receiver coach in college. He told me, uh, just go out there and enjoy yourself. You go out there and play like you played when you were four years old. Enjoy yourself, and whatever happens, happens. You're always prepared. You're always in shape. Go out there and have fun, because you don't know when it's going to be over with. I heard uh, from a little birdie that your favorite saying is, thin in the waist, and cute pretty, in the face. Yeah. pretty in the face. Uh, that's my little saying. Uh, I stay cute in the face and thin in the waist, and as you can see, I'm still holding true to it, so <laughs> just having a little fun. Yeah. And I heard you used to give gloves to rookie receivers? Yeah, I used to give gloves. Uh, when you first come into the CFL as a rookie uh, during training camp, they don't give you any money. They want to wait till you make the team. So you have some rookies, you know, they don't have opportunity uh, to get better gloves or Sometimes at night they would get hungry, I would buy them pizza, just trying to make them feel comfortable because when you're, you're comfortable, you have yeah. a better opportunity to make the team. So I would just try to provide for them the best way I could. Why she, what? Hold on, how, how did you find that out? Um, I, I watch your uh, DVD okay. that right. you made. You did your research. I okay. think in right. 2008. Right, exactly, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Good DVD, by the way. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Who... Who inspired you to play football? Well, actually, I, I wanted to play because one of my older brothers, he's four years older than me, and he was eight at the time, and he started playing football. And my parents were like, you too young. But I told him, if you don't let me play, I'm going to throw a tantrum. So they allowed me to play when I was four. I actually didn't get an opportunity to get on the field till I was six because I was just too small. I mean, my pants were down to my ankles. They couldn't find a helmet or shoulder pad. So I was actually practicing, but when I turned six, that's when I had an opportunity to get on the field. So I just wanted to be and do what my older brother was. What was your best moment of your career? 
Uh, it, it would have to be the, the touchdown in yeah. 2006 in Edmonton. Yeah, the last second play, uh, it, it was amazing. I still look at it sometimes and think, you know, was I involved in that? Was that a dream because the way everything played out? So that was the most exciting moment uh, in, in, my, in my football career. In the huddle, what was going on during that play? Well, actually, the play before that, uh, we, Kevin and I, the quarterback, Kevin Glenn, who's, yeah. who's back with Winnipeg now, we couldn't believe that they played that defense. And we actually said to each other, we may have a shot. Of course, we were laughing when we said that because 100 yards with no time yeah. left, last play of the game. But like you said, he threw the ball up. Yeah. I happened to make a catch and run into the end zone, and the rest is history. But didn't you have the dodge two guys? No, I, I have a special power. I turned invisible, so they, they, they couldn't see me, so. Actually, I just ran straight. They actually look like they dodged me. <laughs> and now we're going to actually show Are you going to show it? Okay. All right. Well, it play. We need a pass interference call. They go to Stiegel. Oh, they get one. Almost a little contact there. there. But no flag. We don't need to go. Maybe the veteran Stiegel trying to sell it. Because... Danny Majoja just mentioned to Rick Campbell, tell them no penalties, please. Four seconds left because you can't end the game on a penalty. A penalty, even if the time has expired, means one more play. Another penalty, and I've seen it happen where two penalties have happened after time has expired. Yeah. The game continues. The last time we won until this year. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the hardest hit I took all year right there. Yeah. <laughs> How was that? That was cool. That was cool. That was pretty cool. It, it still brings me, yeah. uh, I still get tingles when I watch that play. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. You and Kahari Jones had a good chemistry. Mm -hmm. What makes a good, like, tandem? Like, is it the quarterback or the receiver? Uh, it's a combination. You, you guys have, we have to be on the same page because there was a lot of times where Kahari and I, we would do things and only Kahari and I knew we were going to do them. Nobody on offense, the coaches, they didn't know, but that comes with playing together, uh, practicing together, and watching film together that we were able to form that relationship. And your way go was pretty pretty unique uh yeah my waggle what he's talking about as we're running towards the line it was probably unique because my knees were hurting so bad so <laughs> that's what made it a little unique but it was something that i learned how to utilize it actually took me a couple of years to get used to that because just playing in the states you know nine I mean, all the time we're at a standstill so it took me a couple of years to get used to that how was playing kick returner in the u.s i hated it i hated it i didn't like returning kicks or punts but it was something i had to do yeah you know sometimes in life you have to do things you don't have to do, but yeah. I did it with an optimistic, positive attitude, and I was I did pretty well at it. And after your time in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. uh, you you didn't make the Green Bay Packers, right? Right. Because your knee, right? Right. Well, what happened was uh, after my time up, my contract was up with the Bengals. I signed with the Packers, and the first day of training camp, I uh, severely strained my hamstring. So. By the time training camp was up, you know, they didn't have anything to evaluate me on, and that's when they released me, and that's when I came up to camp. Did you have any thoughts that you might not play, or did that? Well, actually, I, after Green Bay, I thought my career was over, and I was actually about to enter the real world and become a teacher, believe it or not. But thank God I didn't have to do that. Oh, yeah. no, I'm just joking. Just joking. Yeah. Just joking. <laughs> but no, my agent called me and told me there's a team in Canada that has your rights and that, that wants you to come up and play. And I said, who? And he said, Winnipeg. And I said, who? <laughs> Winnipeg. And back then, they didn't have the internet, so I had to go on an encyclopedia and look at Winnipeg above North Dakota. North, is North Dakota even in America anymore? So, you know, it, 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 but I wouldn't change anything in the world. Wouldn't change anything in the world about it. How, like when you first got to Winnipeg, did you, because did you, I know people have like, Rumors that we live in egg blues was that right, crossing right. your mind? No, no, all? no. Because uh, my uh, family, uh, 
I, I wasn't born, but my parents had uh, brought my kids up to, uh, I think it was in Montreal or Toronto at the time, uh, to the World's Fair in the 70s, or it was the 60s, I can't remember, but they told me, they told me about Canada, and in school, we learned a little bit about it, so uh, I wasn't too much surprised, besides the weather when it was cold and the mosquitoes when it was hot, uh, about Winnipeg. How was the cold winters? It, it's bad. It's still bad. I still don't like cold weather. That's why I live in Atlanta, Georgia now. So, but uh, I mean, it, it was an experience. I think the coldest game I played in was 2003, and with the wind chill, it was like minus 25. Uh, but my thinking was there were like 25,000 fans in the stands. If they can come to the game, the least I can do is try to go out here and play hard for them. Now we're going to move to broadcasting. What does a day involve as a broadcaster? Well, uh, say if we have uh, two games, we'll have a game on a Saturday at 1 yeah. o'clock and 4 o'clock. We'll, we'll have to show up to the studio probably about 10 o'clock, so we start prepping uh, for our pregame show, some of the things we're going to talk about, some of the players we're going to talk about. So prep for a pregame show. We have a pregame show at 12. You have a game at 1 and 4. And then after your second game at 7, you also have to do some sports center hits and some things like that. So your day starts at 10 a.m. and you may be done at maybe 8, 9 p.m. that evening. Not bad. So you think you still want to take my job? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just asking. <laughs> Who, I would probably replace a Schultz. Huh? Yeah, he needs to be replaced. Huh? I I've been, we've been I trying to get rid of him for years him. now, huh? I'm going to tell him you said yeah. that. <laughs> When you, when you do your three minute warning, I saw one time you're a dancer, right? I'm a great dancer, right? Yeah. Wanna <laughs> bust the move? Oh my goodness. Seriously, bust the move. We, we don't have any music, huh? Ugh. I need about 10 minutes to warm up. All right. All right, th this is my jock climby dance, all right? Yeah. Holy! <laughs> you put me on the spot right there. That was pretty yeah. good. That was pretty good. Teachers, you love that, huh? All right, all right. When you, how did you get the job on TSM? Well, uh, in in 2007, we were in the Grey Cup. Uh, Brian Williams, who's been with TSN for a while, he reached out to him and he was like, "Well, when you retire." You know, there's some people at the company who were thinking about bringing you in. I, I thought he was joking. I never thought about it again. But I announced my retirement, and two weeks later, they were calling me saying, okay, here's your schedule. We have a job for you. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool. It's pretty cool. Nice transition. What was, it's too bad you didn't want to break up. Mm -hmm. But what was that? What was the breakup experience like for you? Oh, it was a great experience. It was a great experience. Just an entire week. Not just the game, but the entire week. Uh, in 2001, uh, we had a great experience. But I had a better experience in 2007 because at the time, I was married. Uh, my oldest son, he was three. He remembers a little bit of it. I had uh, a bunch of my wife's family was up there. My mother, my, I had a sister and a brother was up there. So I had a a lot more family and friends up there, so it was a better experience than what I had in 2001, because then it was just basically me up there. So it's not just the game, it's everything that goes on before and after the game. When you first come up to Winnipeg, uh, the, you only won four games, but uh, what was your first impression of the wide field? Uh, when I knew, saw it, I was like, well, once, once I learned this game, this is something I can definitely take advantage of. Like I said before, it, it took me like a year or two to learn to CFL game. But once I figured things out and figured out the different angles and everything I could take, uh, I really started utilizing the big field and used it to my advantage. How many balls have you kept from your career? Well, I, I actually didn't start keeping balls until uh, 2007 when I got closer to breaking the record. They actually started keeping them for me. I actually didn't keep them for myself, but our, our head equipment guy, Brad Foddy, he was like, we're going to start keeping these balls for you. So I probably have like 15 balls at home now. Holy. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have one favorite? Uh... I guess it would have to be the record-breaking ball in 2007 when I broke the touchdown record. But I'll tell you how much my wife 
thinks of that ball. Uh, I gave her that ball, and when I came home, my kids were in the backyard playing with it. So tells you how much. He, but that's what kids do. You can't blame. That's what little boys do. Are they into football much of you? They're into European football. Their sport is soccer. Oh, I mean, soccer. They, they don't mind watching football, but their sport, they'll sit down and watch an entire soccer Come match. Come on, you got to install I mean, your power. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> they're, they're soccer players. That's their sport of choice. Okay, well, I'm really honored that you would take the time to really impact somebody's life like mine no. and to really to see my peers out there all my peers to come and watch my dream come true no, thank you. and I want to thank Dave, Brenda, Miss Jance, Jack, Colton, Jeremy, my mom, Bram and Grandpa, it's been a special moment. Thank you. And I, I have one question for you. Now, you plan on taking my job. Just give me a few more years so I can just feed my family a few more okay. years. Okay. That's all I ask. Sounds good? All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah.